up? My name is Avery and today I'm going to be doing a tour of my TBR cart. Okay, so recently I got a TBR cart. Here's the cart right here. It's kind of more like just another bookshelf. Um, I did not get the typical like IKEA cart that everyone seems to have. I do have one of those but it broke my first semester of college and I took it back home for my dad to fix it. He ended up keeping it. <laughs> so it's his now, which I don't really need, so he can have it. So I decided to get my own cart. It's actually really big and really tall. It does roll, but I don't really want it to be moved because on the tippy tippy top up there, is the cat food. <laughs> if y'all follow me on Twitter, I actually got a lot of love on a post that I posted recently about my TBR cart. I posted a new picture of my TBR cart and my cat's on top eating because this is the space where the cat food used to be on a little table around like this high um, and the cat food used to be there and that's where they ate. I knew I wanted a TBR cart but I didn't know where to put it. My mom was like, oh, just put it with the cats where the cat food is now and you can put the cat food on your TBR cart. And I was like, that's a great idea, mom, thanks. <laughs> if you didn't know, a TBR cart is basically a cart full of the books that you want to read. To be read books, TBR. And these are all the books that you really wanna to get to soon. So you put it on a cart. I guess it kinda of like urges you to read more since it's on a cart and not on a shelf instead. I personally have been really, really, really loving it. So basically I'm just going to be showing y'all what is on my TBR cart. My TBR cart is not just filled with books, as you could tell. So on the top up here, we have the cat food. They just jump up from my desk. Even though the shelf is really tall, the cart is really tall, they seem to be fine with jumping that high. And then on this shelf right here, we have the books that I really want to read. I'll be going into specifics of the books. I will be telling you all the books. But basically, I'm just gonna go by each shelf first. Um, these are all the books that I really, really want to read soon. I put all my readathons for the month or the readathons for the upcoming months here. And then behind, back here, we have all of my reading journals, my bullet journal, and all of that jazz. Yes, I have a lot of reading journals. <laughs> Let's not talk about it. <laughs> and then I have a little canister right here full of all of my bookmarks that can fit in it. These are not all my bookmarks. Some of my bookmarks are too wide to fit in this, um, but I have a wide collection of little bookmarks here that I absolutely love. I love actually using postcards, old thrift store or antique shop postcards. Those are my favorite kind of bookmarks, um, but those cannot fit in this box because they're too wide. And on this third shelf right here, I actually decided to put all of the physical books that I had read in this month on this shelf. And it is stopped right here by my book embosser. Um, so these are all of the physical books that I have read in the month of May that I am super happy about because I read one physical book last month. So I'm really proud that I read all of these. And then right here, this little contraption doohickey is, um, for my diamond painting. If you didn't know by my Q&A video that I did, one of the hobbies that I picked up recently is something called diamond painting. Basically, diamond painting looks like this as the finishing product. You have a bunch of little diamonds and that are different shades and you it corresponds with these um, symbols here and it, in the end, all of the diamonds make a really pretty picture. So I have this one, we have the couple in front of the Tower of London. And the other night, I finally finished my really colorful elephant. That is the stand for my diamond painting. I basically put it on this board right here and when it's plugged in, it lights up so it can illuminate through the paper so you can see all of these symbols clearly. There is nothing on this bottom shelf here except for the two diamond paintings that I've completed rolled up and the bag of um, supplies for my diamond painting. Okay, so this is a TBR cart book tour. So I'm going to be sharing with you all, all of the books that are on my immediate TBR. These are all of the books that I am most excited to read. I have a TBR shelf right here. I'm 
touching it right here. It is full of books that I have not read yet, but these are all the books that I want to read the most. <laughs> I did group them. This is the grouping. So we have books here that I am currently reading or in the middle of reading and will come back to. We have this huge little section right here this whole group right here full of classics because right now in May it is classics of fun so I thought that I would put all of the classics that I am most excited to read on my TBR cart this space is empty because I just pulled out two books that I'm currently reading and um, they're in my purse I'm not gonna talk about those right now um, we of course have series that I want to continue on with right here these two um, and then we just have little ones that I really want to read right here we have my library books that I have not read yet and then we have a few romance books for the smutathon coming in June I just put those on there because I wanted to make the shelf whole smutathon has not happened yet because it's June and all my other um readathon books are actually in my TBR shelf right now not on my TBR cart um but I really want to just make the shelf full um, even though it's not right now because there's this space right here. So I'm going to be showing you each book one by one. First at the front we have Dark Lover by J.R. Ward. I am almost halfway through this book. I put it down a couple weeks ago because I think I was in the middle of another book that was really gripping my attention. I am really enjoying it though and I want to continue reading it so I'm going to put it at the very front of my TBR cart. Next is Little Women that I am 75% of the way through. This is for the Classics Athon and I'm currently listening to the audiobook that's why the bookmark has not moved from its halfway point. I'm actually around this much through right now. Sorry for all of the cat hair on this book. Great. The next group is all of the classics that I want to read for Classics Athon or the classics that I am looking forward to reading the most because I am not going to be getting to all of these because it is May 25th <laughs> and we don't have time to read all these books. First we have Anne of Green Gables and Anne of Avalonia by L.M. Montgomery, Persuasion by Jane Austen, Northanger Abbey by Jane Austen, Mansfield Park by Jane Austen, and Love and Friendship by Jane Austen. We also have another classic here, Great Expectations by Charles Dickens. The next group is the series that I want to continue reading. Of course, we have Dreams of Gods and Monsters by Lainey Taylor. I am currently reading the Daughter of Smoke and Bone trilogy. I have just finished the novella and it is time for this one. So I'm going to be getting to it very, very soon. Next, we have the next two books in the Royals trilogy series. Um, the second book, Broken Prince by Aaron Watt. And we have Twisted Palace by Aaron Watt. I will be reading these during the Smutathon or the Romanceathon in June for sure. Next are two miscellaneous books that I just really want to get to. We have The Princess and the Fangirl by Ashley Poston. Next we have a graphic novel. We have Monstrous Volume 1 Awakening by Oh my god, I cannot pronounce names. Majory Lu and Sana Takenda. I'm so sorry if I butchered their names. I probably did. I'm so sorry. Next, we have two library books, but they are due on June 6th, so we'll see if I get to them. Um, we have Hate to Want You by Alicia Ray and Signs Point to Yes by Sandy Hall. The last three books on this shelf are books that are romance books that I want to get to more than anything, but I'm going to save them for the Smutathon because they do fit a lot of the challenges. And I really, really, really want to try completing the whole entire bingo board, but we'll see what happens. Um, first, we have, of course, The Unhoneymooners by Christina Lauren, one of my most anticipated reads for 2019. Actually, all three of these books are some of my most anticipated reads for 2019. Next, we have The Bride Test by Helen Wong. I cannot wait to read this one too. And lastly, we have This Is Not A Love Scene by S.C. Miguel. Hopefully I said that right. <laughs> um, this is a romance book with a disability rep and I'm so, 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 so excited. So those are all the books on that shelf. Um, I guess I'll let you know all of these books down here. I will not be going into specifics as to what I thought about them. Be sure to check out my May wrap up, which will come up soon for that. Again, these are all of the physical books that I read in May that I decided to put on this shelf down here. We have Piper by Jay Asher and Jessica Freeberg with illustrations by Jeff Stokely. Days of Blood and Starlight by Lainey Taylor. Paper Princess by Erin Watt. Daughter of the Siren Queen by Trisha Levenseller. Sense and Sensibility by Jane Austen. The Governess Game by Tessa Dare. And finally, Night of Cake and Puppets 
by Lainey Taylor with illustrations by Jim DiBartolo, who is actually Lainey Taylor's husband. So it was super, super cute. That's the only thing I'll say about this right now. But anyways, there y'all have it. That is a TBR card for you. I hope y'all enjoyed this video. Please let me know down below if you would be interested in seeing another bookshelf tour because I have not done a bookshelf tour with the new arrangement of all my books and since I moved back from college. I don't know how interesting bookshelf tours are. Like I don't want to post too many of them. <laughs> Anyways, thank y'all so much for watching and I will see y'all soon with a new video. Bye! Thank you.